Okay. Welcome, everyone. This is uh, the Sheet Metal Fundamentals webinar we're going to go over here using the CATIA 3D experience. My name is Joshua Zumberger. I'm one of the CATIA application engineers here. Uh, just a quick overview from uh, background on me. Uh, worked with Lockheed Martin for a little while, worked with Toyota uh, Motor Manufacturing as well. So a robotics engineer and a process engineer for both of those companies. I also have a little bit of experience uh, working in some sheet metal fabrication shops and some job shops there. So a uh, decent amount of experience working with actually uh, similar software to this was actually on the SolidWorks side. Now I've had the opportunity to use this, so I've kind of been able to uh, bounce around from both. Right now I uh, currently am the or in working out of the Cincinnati, Ohio office here. So getting started with this, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be working under the sheet metal designer role. Uh, within the 3D experience platform, there's a lot of different roles that you can use and that you can uh, follow under. And with this sheet metal designer role comes a lot of different apps that fall underneath it. Now, everything from bent part design, you have mechanical systems that work with this. These are all apps that pertain to that sheet metal designer role. Today, though, since we're just kind of covering the fundamentals, we're going to be focusing on just one of these apps. We're actually going to be focusing on the sheet metal design app. We're going to have kind of go over some three main topics today. We're going to go over some basic design features. Then we'll kind of work our way into uh, an interesting and very useful uh, part of this sheet metal design app, the sheet metal order processing. And then at the very end, we'll just touch on uh, some multi-body methodology, a kind of a new way to, to look at how to form maybe more complex parts within this. So to get started with the basic design features, here's the different topics we're going to be covering today. I'm going to start it off working through, basically, we're going to create a pan type of uh, like a lid feature here where we're going to go through setting your parameters. We're going to create the walls. Uh, add some relief cuts in there for necessary flanges. Show uh, a different type of flanges that we have using like the hems. We'll go through, do an overlap check, corner relief, uh, adding a bridge, which is part of the stamping features that this involves. And then we'll go and take those, some of those features and we'll pattern them and we'll go mirror them. And like almost everything you do in the sheet metal industry, we'll go and we'll save it out to a DXF. So to get started here, we're going to touch on the sheet metal parameters. So with this, we have our base drawing. Before you start anything, you need to go and set your parameters. We're going to set our thickness. We're going to set our bend radius here. And if you look, the K factor is automatically adjusting. and It's already populating based on what you do. And that's because of a formula that's already preset. Now, if you want to go in and you want to set your own K factor, you can erase that formula. Boom, you're set. You're ready to go where you can manually uh, upload or manually go and put in your K factor. So. That said, you can also go, and there's a nice feature where if you have certain uh, standards that your company wants to upload, you can go and put them in there too. So it's simple as that. Now we've gone and we've set our sheet metal parameters. Let's start creating stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our, our base wall. By that, we already have our sketch drawn out. We can go and select our wall feature, and we can click directly on that sketch. And as you see here, it's gone and we can go and add material to the top side. We can split it about that plane that the sketch is on or go back to the top side. We're going to leave it there on the top. There's our base wall that we're going to use. And now we're going to use our wall on edge feature to go around. And this is going to give us our walls around the perimeter. So we go select all the edges that we want to go ahead and, and populate that edge on. We'll work our way around it. From here, then you can adjust the height, set it to whatever you need to. Your type, you can go from an outer or more like an inside dimension. Go ahead and select your preview. There we go. Click OK. We've now gone and we've created our pan. We've created our top of lid that we're going to use, at least the, the base features of this. So next is we're going to go through and show uh, how to create a, a relief cut. If you are putting a type of wall or a type of flange, inside of a, an area where you're going to need that your laser cutter to give it a little relief so that we can actually form the part up. We'll go back to our wall on edge feature. We're going to select this inside edge here. Now, if we look, kind of like I mentioned earlier on this, 
the left and the right side of this, this wall and edge here, you're not gonna be able to form that up. Uh, you're gonna need to allow some sort of relief cup so you can actually get in there and bend it. And also you're gonna need it for your, uh, for your laser cutter to be able to get in there. So if we go down to our bends option, we see here our left extremity and our right extremity. Right now they are with no relief cuts at all. So we can go in there and we have a variety of options of relief cuts we can do. We select the round relief and it auto populates our length and our uh, radius there. And right now we see that the relief cuts are actually cutting in to the side walls to the other part of, the, uh, uh, of our pan there. So we can click and drag and pull in the edge of the wall and allow that relief cut to completely miss our original wall there. And now we have space to make that cut. We have space to make that bend. We go to our next, we're gonna check out how to throw a hem into this part. And one, a hem is one of the many types of uh, flanges that we can put into this. We have a regular flange, we have a hem, you can do a teardrop or even a user flange uh, where you can customize a uh, profile and set it on your own. So here we've gone, select the hem, select the edge of the wall that we wanna use. If we don't like it, that direction it's going, it's a simple reverse the direction back over. Our K factor is set, it was already populated in there from the formula. Now the radius of it, similar to the K factor, it's already created the radius for us, but if you wanna go ahead and manually change it, you can go in there, delete the formula, and now you can edit the radius to whatever you want. And the nice thing with this too, is you can actually go in the position of it. Right now it's adding that radius on top. You can go and trim the support, so that way it stays within the confines, it stays within the constraints of, uh, of your height there for that flange. It lets everything stay within the parameters that you wanna set. So there's how to throw a quick uh, hem in there, no problem. We'll go to our next slide, the overlap check. Now this is very useful for start getting into complex parts with a lot of bends coming into it. And you wanna make sure that you have, uh, none of those flanges or walls are overlapping when you unfold the part. So we can go here, we can check our model, go into the model tab, and we can actually go from here and we can select our fold and unfold button which goes and gives us our flat pattern uh, right there to easily view. And right now, everything looks fine. We know that everything is good. We're gonna intentionally put a wall in here that is going to overlap. It's intentionally, it's gonna intersect and it's not gonna create a uh, producible part. So we go here, we see that we know that's not gonna work, but we wanna check it. So if we do our unfold, and we go to our review tab, and we can actually select the check overlapping button. And this will go and it uses the part body and it detects that there are two overlapping instances of this. We select okay. And on the left side, we've actually gone and created uh, two curves in our geometric set that show exactly where the part overlaps. And that's a great feature too for, like I said earlier, you're getting into a complex part, you get into a part that has a lot of bends and uh, you wanna make sure formability is there. Using this overlap check will make sure that you're not not doing slight overlaps within corners or uh, running into any issues when you actually go to produce the part. Now, here we go to corner relief, and this is, corner relief is big. They're trying to prevent, you know, deformation that may happen when you are forming up your part around those corners. So, for this, flip it around here, and we can take a look. We want to add relief to all of our corners around the edge. So we can go under our refine tab, select corner relief, click yes. We're going to work within this part body. And from here, you can adjust your corner relief to whether you want to do a radius relief, a square relief, or even a, a user or custom relief. We can go and we can set our radius. And now to do this, you select the bend, the first and second bend of that corner that you want to add the relief to. It'll populate the relief outline for where that'll be. And nice thing too, is you don't have to keep clicking in and out of this corner relief button. It'll automatically add it to the list. It knows what you're trying to do here when you go around and click it. So you click your bend, click your second there, and it automatically populate uh, within that table. So we've gone around the corners, add our reliefs, we select okay. And now we've added corner reliefs uh, to all of the bends that are around all the corners.
So our next step, we are going to add a bridge. Now these, a bridge is one of the, uh, one of the several types of stamping, stampings that you can do within this. So we go over here. Here's the uh, several types here. You can do a surface stamp, curb, there's flange cutouts, flange holes, and circular stamp. And we also have all these options here at a louver. You can throw a bridge in there, even stiffening ribs and like a dowel cutout as well. So for this though, we're gonna go and we're gonna select our bridge. And we'll go to this wall of our pan and wherever you select it at on that face, that's where it's gonna uh, input it. So if we wanna change the position though, we can go to our position sketch. We can add geometric constraints to this positioning which will allow us to locate the center of that bridge wherever we need it to be. Let's go in, add a few constraints. We can exit out of the sketch. And now looking at it, it looks like it's just two lines. Well, that's because it's actually on the opposite side of this wall. If we want to be on the outside, we can go and reverse it. And now we pop that onto the correct side. From here, then you can go and adjust all your parameters, your height, length, width, uh, even the angle of the bridge that you want. And when it's in position, select OK. And there you've gone and you've created a bridge. And that's just one of the many stamping features that are within this, uh, within the Sheet Metal Design app. Next, we're going to touch on taking that bridge that we have, where we're going to pattern it down the side of the, the pan. And we'll go ahead and mirror it to the opposite side as well, so we have a symmetric looking piece. So from here, we can go. And we want to take that bridge and take it down that edge of the pan. So we select the bridge from our tree. We go to the Transform tab and we do a rectangular pattern. Now from here, the parameters you can do instances in length, instances in spacing. We're going to leave it where it is there. Instances in spacing. We'll adjust our spacing out to 80 millimeters and we'll put three instances in there. Now you have to select a reference element to say what line it's going to take. And we see there it's kicking it out the wrong direction. No problem. You can select reverse, select OK. And now we've gone and patterned that bridge down the edge of that pan that we need. We want to take this though, and we want this to be a symmetrical piece. We want to mirror it about so it's on the opposite side. So we can select that rectangular pattern, click the mirror button. And now we don't have a plane in there yet, but we can create a plane to mirror it about. We can use the plane type and select between. We'll click our first face here that we have the bridges on and also the opposite side. And from there, you can use a ratio to put the plane where you want or select the middle plane button and it automatically will produce a plane in the center of your part there. By doing that, it's gone and it's mirrored over the bridges. So now you have them on both sides of it. And then from there too, from using that plane feature where it is split between the two walls, if you were to go back through later on and adjust the width of this, uh, of this pan, that plane is going to stay in the center. It's going to work there. It's going to allow for easier design changeability and you can go and make edits and it'll keep those features where you want them to be. All right. Next, we're going to saving to a DXF. Like almost all sheet metal fabrication jobs, uh, you're going to send it out to a laser to be cut out, or send it out to, you know, to get stamped. You're going to have to save it out to a DXF. Tia here has a nice feature where you can go straight to your tools and they have a save as DXF button ready to go for you. You can adjust your tolerances. You can adjust what you want to save out, whether it's just the bend lines, where it's just the stamp lines uh, or none of those at all. You click save, type in your part name, save it out. So now once now, you can go and you can actually open that DXF out. See here now, you have your outline of your entire part of the flat pattern part. Your red dashed lines are your bend lines. The green dashed are your stampings. And you have this saved out right away ready to go to be produced, to be cut out or stamped, uh, however you need it to be. Now, the next cool feature we're gonna go over is the sheet metal order processing. And this is a feature that 
allows you to go through and step by step shows you how this part is going to get formed up or how it's going to be created. From here, we can go down and we can select our sheet metal order processing button. When we do that, we click our fixed face, which is usually going to be that first wall that you make. We select that. We select all the different process types that we want to incorporate into this process definition. You can do specifically just bends, go just stamps or cuts. We're going to keep all of it in this. We select it for our direction. We can go and change it. We're going to extrude this out basically upon the Y axis and we'll click initialize process. And once we do that, every step that it takes to make this part has been created, has been formed. Everything from stamping all the way up to the forming, it is all there. Now, some of these parts, though, some of these steps are kind of redundant or they'll happen within the same, the same process. So you can go through, like for all those bridges there, we can go through and select all those bridges. We can right click and we can merge those processes together. So it, it shortens it down a little bit, creates more uh, uniform, easier to use processes. And this is extremely beneficial for, let's say, let's say you have a new, uh, new employee that's on the floor that needs to see how this part is formed up. Or you are running into issues on a certain step on a certain forming uh, part with this, and you need to go back and make some edits on a specific order process. What you see here is when you create this, you can actually go and it creates these different order processes for you. And you can go back in, fine tune them to how you need to be if you need to make edits, or if you have someone out on the floor, it's on the press break, they're not sure what steps they need to be doing in which order, this lays it out for them to be able to, to view and it gives a more, a better understanding of, uh, of how this part is supposed to be formed up. All right, and lastly, we're gonna to touch on the, just briefly touch on the multi-body methodology. Now, this is just a kind of a quick glimpse at what it is and uh, not necessarily gonna be a deep dive into it at all, but multi-body approach though, it allows users to create, so multiple bodies of work and connect them after they've been designed. So this is great for, you know, the complex, very complex metal parts that incorporate a lot of different features. Uh, the advantages to using this, your update performance is better. Since the updates now are kept within each local body of the part, uh, instead of the entire part, your update performance is gonna be better. And it also makes it easier to for the designer and breaking down these complex parts into more of a modular structure. So this is going to help then when you go back uh, for change management or revisions or designs, need to, uh, design changes need to be made. This is going to make it easier where you can focus in more on just the individual part body and not necessarily have to incorporate all of that at a time. So for this though, you can see here that you can go to your original part body, you go and select your bend feature, and then you select the next face that you want it to, uh, to connect it with. And once that's done, you've gone and created and connected your uh, separate part bodies. So from that there, you can go through and connect several different part bodies together. And it allows you, like I said, to incorporate a lot of complex designs that are kind of kept separate on their own part bodies. And it allows you to form them into one solid part. All right, so just a quick... Uh, recap of everything then we've gone over for the sheet metal design we've gone over some basic design features which incorporated the parameters we did the wall creation and walls on edge we did the, some relief cuts went over to throw showed how to throw a hem in there and also did the overlap check where we showed uh, if there's any overlaps on the unfolded part went over the corner reliefs and we added a bridge into the part as well and then we patterned that bridge down mirrored it across and then saved it out to a DXF. Went over the sheet metal order processing, where we showed there how to show every single step of the process to form up the part, and how you can go in and if you needed to make edits to it, you can do that. And we touched on the multi-body methodology there. So that is the end of this presentation. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day.